What is up, Canes fans, and welcome into another edition of the Canes Insight Podcast. I am your host, Peter Ariz. I have a very, very special guest today on the basketball side, Keyshawn George, a signee for this year's recruiting class. Very intriguing prospect. Not that much information about him online. Coming from overseas, playing professionally in France. He's a Swiss national. Get to know him a little bit. Um, a little bit about his game, his decision to choose the Hurricanes, which not a lot of people realize that he visited Miami back in December. Again, not that much information out there about this guy. I had a very good about 15-minute conversation with him, his style of play, how the Euro game is going to help him translate uh, to the NCAA level next year. And again, getting into his recruitment, um, and he mentions how important it was for Coach Laranega to make him a priority. I think this is a guy who's going to be a very high impact player for the Canes next season. He thinks he can come in and, and kind of take some of the minutes from, from Isaiah Wong leaving last year, uh, which that's, that's high aspirations for a guy like him coming in his first year, but there's no reason why he can't um, at least fill some of that role. Him coming in almost at 20 years old. Once the season starts, very excited about this guy's upside and how he's going to fit into the team. I'm also going to be speaking with Michael Nwoku soon. Uh, very excited about his potential as a big man uh, develop, developing in this, in this system for Coach Laranega and staff. So we have a basketball-focused episode today. We'll be back again next week with more football recruiting info. Obviously, Miami gets a 2026 commitment this week from Kasani Giles out of IMG. And there could be some more stuff on the horizon here as we get into the heart of the summer, camp season started. So stay tuned for that, canesinsight.com. Remember to check out our Canes Insight shop. We have our Canes Insight merch on there. You can see that link on the website. Uh, it will also be in, uh, link will also be in the bio as well. Um, but again, we'll be back next week with more football info. But enjoy this podcast and interview with Keyshawn George. All right, everybody, excited to welcome in now Keyshawn George, Miami Hurricanes basketball signee for this incoming recruiting class. Uh, Keyshawn is is all the way over there in France now, so he's six hours ahead of us. So I appreciate him taking the time out to do this interview today. Keyshawn, thank you for coming on and excited to get to know you a little bit and introduce you to the Canes family. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a pleasure. So Keyshawn, you know, I was just telling you before we came on, you're, you're an interesting recruiting story, right? Because normally, you know, everyone follows these recruiting websites and the rankings and the, and the five-star, four-star, all that stuff, right? And I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yeah. But you've gone a different route. You've been playing overseas. You're a Swiss international. Um, your father played professionally overseas um, and played at St. Saint, Saint Francis College uh, in Pennsylvania as well. Um, but you're doing it the different, the different way, right? So you're coming up from, from, uh, the professional side over there in France. Um, yeah. talk to me about how your recruiting process went. Um, there weren't a lot of interviews out there about you. So no one really knows like who was recruiting you, um, and things of that nature. So just walk us through that if you can. So, so basically at the beginning of the season, um, I was playing in the under 21 category at first. And uh, I had a pretty big start of the season, combined like two 30 game po point games, and um, videos of me starting just going on on the net. And uh, like I'd say mid end of November, I got a call from the coach Larinaga directly, and uh, he said I had a uh, he had a scholarship for me at Miami. So um, yeah, really excited, and it just went naturally. So this wasn't a new thing for Miami coming into the picture. You've been building a relationship with the coaching staff over there and following them throughout the season. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So who else besides Miami, what are some of the other schools, just to let the people know um, who are unaware, who were some of the other schools that, that you were talking to and, and were interested in as well? Um, I had um, Xavier showed a lot of interest. Um, Pittsburgh as well. Um, Illinois with some interest. And the last one would be Texas. Should some okay. And the, let the difference with Miami is that they really like is the coach. Like I said before, the coach directly contacted me, and they were really like um, really really interested in me like from get go. 
And, you know, it's interesting for you because I'm guessing you have not had an opportunity to visit campus. I did actually in the oh, December. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So look, all this stuff was under wraps, man, because no one knew about any of this stuff. Yeah. Right. So talk about your experience down there. Obviously a little bit different, uh, you know, you being born in Switzerland and growing up over there in, in, in Europe. Just talk about your time down at the campus in Miami and, and your thoughts about what you saw down there. It was great. I mean, I had a. I, it was a bit special because I had to visit in December because we had a like a kind of little vacation. So I mm -hmm. came on the thirty first and left the first of January. So I was kind. Of, it was official visit, but nobody was really on campus. But just the feeling of the place was really cool. Like I had a good, um, felt good, good environment. Obviously, good weather, right? But yeah, December just, in Miami, man, that weather's tough to beat. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But yeah, just great overall feeling. Love the, the campus, love everything. It's just, yeah, great feeling. So let's talk your game a little bit, right? Because again, there's clips out there and people have seen what's out there and you look and look at the stats and, and know that you're a good shooter and, and things of that nature. But I want you to give the, the, the fans out there an honest assessment of your game, uh, where it's at right now, um, how, you, and I guess, you know, if there was a player out there that you would kind of compare your style of play to? Um, for me, at first, it's hard to, like, really give a specific player where I could really, like, say, okay, I see myself in him, right? But I would say someone that I look up to and, like, try to imitate a bit is, like, Shea Gidges and Designer. Because, mm -hmm. like, I'm not that athletic. I'm kind of long like him, I would say. Right. But I'm not the type of guy that's going to put one dribble and go dunk on someone, right? I'm trying right. to, like, I'm more low to the ground, I would say. Not low to the ground, but, like, more on the ground, right? Right. And, um, like, I like, like, like to create space off, off the dribble, uh, catch and shoot, obviously. So, yeah, I try to do overall. overall. And he's, and he's more of a combo guard. Yeah, really. exactly. Um, so from what i've seen from you right it seems like you've you've grown a lot right you look at the pictures yeah, exactly. of you and i mean talk about the growth spurt you've had and kind of like how you can translate you know you growing up and probably not being the biggest guy right having to play against the bigger guys sure. how that guard skill set now you're able to translate that into your your body and growing into your your frame oh yeah so yeah at first it was 100 percent. i was playing only point guard so, like, handling the ball, playing the screens and all that. So, I kind of used to that, right? And as I grew, I started to get off a bit that point guard position and try to, like, read the game in different ways. So, instead of being the active ball, having the ball on the ball screen, mm -hmm. making the read after that. So, catching on a ring, seeing which helps, drive, kick, and all that. So, I have seen the two aspects of the game on the, on the guard positions, right? So, I right. think that's a good aspect, right? And just... I was lucky enough to keep my coordination from that growth spurt and my like my yeah my handles coordination and all that so I think I was lucky for that too. Right, and then the next uh, step obviously is I'm sure you want to get in the weight room and and sure. add strength, um, but that will that will come naturally. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I wanted to ask you about the European game compared to what you're about to step into with the college game and even the NBA game, right? Because it's a very different game, and we see how. You know, in the past, right, you know, what, when you were even younger, a lot of times European players coming into the NBA and coming over to America, it was always, well, how's their game going to translate? Yeah. Now, the way that, it, that things have trended, right, people see how well it translates in the modern game with the skill set. You have to be able to shoot, handle the ball, very fundamentally sound all around. Um, yeah. From what you've seen in the college game and, and the – I'm sure you watched the NCAA tournament closely and you saw the run that Miami was on. How, how, how is that transition going to be for you? And how do you think your skill set is going to be able to translate to, to the game of the college level? Um, I think, first of all, I like to play freely, like at an up pace. I think I need that for sure. And I think I could really be performant in that type of game. So I think that would be a, a good point for me. Then it's just going to be a – me getting used to, to the speed of the game, the, the freeness of the game, and just trying to adapt to that, right? So I think with my, my skill set and what I could do, I could pretty, like, quickly, if I should say, transition to that type of game. 
but for sure it's going to take me like a bit of time to to be able to transition for more like in Europe more like boxed in type of play where we have to follow the plays and make the right reads every time then more play the ball and play freely so that would be the big difference for me but the positive you could say for you though is that you have had the opportunity right to play against grown men yeah which for sure. Physically, you've had to learn how to play at your own pace, right? Yeah, so yeah. you're not going to get sped up by, you know, some of the athleticism at, yeah. at the college level. Yeah, for sure. Going back to Miami a little bit, because you talk about the relationship you built and how important it was for you for, for Coach Larinaga himself to reach out. Your role, looking at the roster, and I'm sure that you saw that Jordan Miller um, is, you know, headed to the next level, Isaiah Wong as well some very important returning pieces, but a lot of minutes that are going to be available for someone like you coming in based on what the coaches have told you. And I know there's not any promises in, in this, in this business, right. But how do you see yourself fitting into this current Miami team for next season? Well, very well. Um, hopefully I could fill in um, um, the spot of Wong that's leaving. Correct. Um, hopefully I could, you know, provide what some close to what he was providing even more, right? So that's what I'm gonna come and work for. Get get my spot and yeah, earn my spot in the in the starting five in the in the rotation. That's all. Definitely. I'm Listen, you know who you know who your your body type reminds me of a little bit, man. Remember Dante Exum? Yeah, he's playing so, for in Europe right now. Belgium. Yeah, he is. I think he was the MVP of of the Euro League last year, or the yeah. or or maybe this year. I'm not sure. Um, but no, there's a lot of listen. The, the the game of basketball, right? It's it's interesting because you you yourself could still grow a couple more inches, and yeah. you know who's going to be able to? You're going to be stepping out in the three point line, shooting at at six nine, six ten. If you put a couple more inches on you, right? So. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're what? You're 19. You're 19 years 19 old right years. now. 19. Okay. And what was your growth spurt like the last couple of of years? Would you so, say? So I got it in meters. So in feet, I don't can't really translate. Okay. I'll say. So I was 175 meters three years ago. So that's okay. let me. I'm gonna check on my phone. Uh, I, I I can do it. All right, 175 to, to feet. Okay. Well, 175, 175 meters. Yeah. No, 170 centimeters. So it's one centimeter something. Five meters. Yeah, yeah. So let's see here. You're five seven. Three five years seven. ago. <laughs> and uh, and you're six six five, now, six, six, six seven. Six, six, seven. Yeah. So, so you've grown you've grown an entire foot. Yeah. Wow. Wow. No, that's crazy. And I think that's why people are so excited, right? About your about your upside and, and your potential here. So a couple more questions before I let you go, Keyshawn. Um, your father, having played professionally, right, and having played at the collegiate level, um, yeah. how, how does that kind of help you? And and you know, what kind of advice does he give you and instill in you in terms of your journey as a as a basketball player? So up until I left uh, Switzerland to come play in France, he was my coach. So wow. for fourteen years, he just he was my coach basically. So. Basically, all I know up until 15 years old, it was thanks right. to him. Right? All the um, dribbling exercises, shooting, f form shooting, um, st like stretching and all the little stuff. It's him. He put it that right. in. So all that worth et ethic since the young ages, that's all him. So that's what he, he taught me. Yeah. So he laid the foundation for yeah, you. For sure. hundred percent. 100%. And 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 what 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 was his reaction on your decision to to go to Miami? Um, he was just supportive because, like, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm in a very good situation here in France. Like, obviously playing with the pros and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was just he was just supporting me whether if I wanted to go to Miami, stay in here in France, and just help me um, really take out what I really wanted inside of me. Right. Right. So I always told them that since a young age i wanted to go to play for a big school in the u.s so he took that into consideration um talk we talked a lot me and him and he just supported me with my choice so that's great what kind of feedback did you get from the nba side because i know there was some buzz 
um, about, I know Draft Express, Jonathan Giovanni, who, who does a really good job and, and covers things overseas there. Um, he, he has talked highly about you. Um, I mean, did you get any feedback? Was that kind of a tough decision? You saying, look, maybe I stick it out here another year or two um, and I could and I could get drafted or, or you were just pretty much set on going to the college, the college route. At first, it was really complicated because, like I said, there's not that many um, European players that come play to the university and just blow up and do one and done and finish drafted. Right. And there's more and more like young guys that play pro in France get like we see Victor, but Victor is different, like yeah. on, another, on another other step, right? There's another kid called um Koulibaly. I don't know if you mm-hmm. heard of him. Okay, States. yeah. So yeah, a lot yeah. of young guys right now are like he's the wing, he's the wing guy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. L- lanky as well. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of young guys that get the opportunities to play in pro and get that attention for the NBA, right? But like I said before, it's just what I wanted deep down is to 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 find a good school, play for a good school, and try that that route. That's what I wanted deep down, and I feel it's a great fit with Miami. Definitely. Okay, last uh, last question here. Last couple questions here. Who's the best player? I mean, I guess you pretty much just mentioned him, right? I mean, that I don't know if that's going to be your answer, but who's the best player that you've gone up against uh, over there or internationally in general? Um. I played. I'm actually playing what right now with uh, Mike Jellaball. I don't know okay. if you know him. He played a couple years in the in the NBA. Yep. Um, French national team for sure. B- very big name here in France. Um, Nick Moore. Okay. He played for SMU, I believe. He mm-hmm. was a pretty good player. And recently, I played against Mike Scott. Yeah, from UVA. Mike Scott, he played in uh, Philly, I believe, his last year. Yeah, he played. I want to say he played at Virginia as well. He yeah, played power forward at Virginia. Oh yeah, Mike Scott would be the like the latest NBA guy. And though, listen, those are seasoned vets at the end of the day. Yeah. So those experiences, I'm sure you're going to be. Look, you're coming into an experienced team in Miami, obviously, mm-hmm. right? There's guys who are coming back and and are going to be older than you and have been through the run. But man, you're. Like we've been talking about, you've been you've been in there with grown men, and I'm sure learning a lot from those from those experiences. Sure. Yeah. Keyshawn, when do you enroll in Miami? When are you coming over to the states for good? Um, summer school. So twentieth okay. of June, I believe. Man, so less than a month. Yep. Close, are you uh, are are you are you excited? Are you are you kind of nervous to leave uh, Europe, or what what are you feeling like right now? Excited for sure. Um, right now we're in the playoffs, um, okay. with our team. So I'm kind of focused on that, like getting work done. Right. Um, but for sure, excited to can't wait to start it. Start the journey. Definitely. Well, Keyshawn George, I'm sure he's going to be a big part of this Miami team next season. Like we talked about, he's coming in with experience coming in. You're going to be almost 20 years old by the time the season starts, man. So you're yeah. not the, your normal, uh, first year guy coming in. Canes fans are excited to see you out there. And thank you again for taking the time today, Keyshawn. Appreciate sure, no problem with pleasure. Pleasure.